Adam Savage here in my cave with a spotlight on a tool I've been getting some questions on lately. Uh, obviously, in any makerspace like mine, uh, drawing straight lines is a very important thing to be able to do. And thus, I have a ton of different rulers and things for drawing straight lines, but also drawing perfectly perpendicular lines i.e. at right angles to each other, is also a super common and super important uh, thing in the shop. And for that, you need what's called a square. Uh, and this right here is a standard woodworker's square. This one actually was my grandfather's. Uh, this is an old craftsman, I believe, if I'm not incorrect. I could be wrong, it might not be craftsman specifically, but squares like this abound, they're everywhere. Um, however, Sometimes for prop making, this is way too much square for me. Sometimes I'm working on a smaller object. Uh, and that's what I wanted to introduce to you today is the machinist's square. Because woodworkers aren't the only ones who need squares. No, no, machinists have their own entire category of squares. Um, this is a pretty standard machinist square. This is a four inch square, is that correct? Yep, wait, 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 no, this is a five inch square, sorry a five inch square. <laughs> My powers of estimating are bad today. Um, and it's just two pieces of stainless steel bolted together at a perfect right angle. Um, and the fact is, is actually they make these in all sorts of different sizes. Here's a, what is that? That's just, I'm not trusting anything. There's a three inch and here's a one and three quarter inch machine square. I have another half dozen uh, that I frequently go to depending on what I need to do marking up on. Um, this is one of those tools that you might not think that you need it, but I'm here to say that if you have it in your shop, you're going to use it because when you're working on a small part, trying to bring over a big old square like this and trying to get it across your part so you can make your right angle mark, well, using something like this is a lot easier. And using something like this, depending on the size of the part, I have multiple squares for multiple different use cases, and I use them for those use cases all the freaking time. Um, this is also an area in which you don't need to get super spendy. Um, if you are a high-level machinist, you might have squares that are built to a uh, super high tolerance, that they are absolutely perfect, uh, and you'd spend hundreds of dollars on them, but you don't need to. For really well under 20 bucks, you can buy any one of these. Uh, we'll include some links uh, in the comments below after this video. Um, the machinist square falls into the category of the kind of tool that you might think you've got it covered if you've got a couple of these, both, let's say, big and small, and yet what these afford you the ability to do vastly outpaces those big old wooden woodworker squares. Um, and again, you could spend hundreds of dollars on these if you were a super high-end machinist, but you don't need to. You could spend 10 bucks on one of these made in China or made in Poland, and they are just fine for the average maker. Don't drop them. When you drop them, they can get thrown out of whack and then you gotta label it not square. J Jamie had a square in his shop labeled not square and it was there for the entire 25 years I worked in Jamie's shop and it drove me crazy. Why keep it if it's not square? It literally doesn't do the one thing it was built to do. So why are you keeping it around? He never threw anything out. 